Welcome to the New Testament Bible Study, presented by the Gatlinburg Church of Christ. I'm David Barton. The Apostle Paul, writing to the young man Timothy, encouraged him to rightly divide the word of truth. Paul's encouragement both then and even now is to know and study God's word. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, is profitable for reproof, is profitable for correction, is profitable for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly furnished, equipped for every good work. Our goal for this study is to focus on and better understand the New Testament epistles written by Paul and, and John and Peter and others. Open your Bibles now and let's study together. But first, let's pause for a word of prayer. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Our God and our Father in heaven, we're grateful for the written word. Thankful, Father, that in your wisdom you've preserved in writing all of those things that you would have us to know. And Father, as we continue our study, we're grateful for the gospel. For we know, Father, that it is the very power that leads to salvation. And we're thankful, Father, that we can read and understand your will for our lives. Help us as we continue our study through 1 Corinthians that we might gain much, Father, from the example of those early Christians. Bless us as we study together on this day. In Jesus' name, and amen. Welcome to the New Testament Bible study. Our lesson today is taken once again from 1 Corinthians, this time from that chapter 15. This very important chapter on the resurrection has been called the third part of 1 Corinthians. Some have said it's the most important portion of the epistle. It has been called the resurrection chapter of the Bible. It is the final doctrinal chapter of Paul's first letter to the church at Corinth. Let's begin by reading those first four verses, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preached to you, which also you received and in which you stand, by which also you are saved, if you hold fast the word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you first of all that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He arose again the third day according to the Scriptures." Paul begins this 15th chapter by reminding his first century audience of the gospel, the gospel that he had preached to them personally. He writes in that opening verse, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached to you, which you also received, and in which you stand. Paul says, Moreover, or in addition to, to what I've already said and am now about to say, he continues his instructions to the brethren at Corinth. He begins with the declaration, not in any new truth, but with the affirmation and the reminder of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The glad announcement, the good news of the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. And Paul says that this is the message that I preach to you. Now remember what he says also about the gospel back in Romans chapter 1? In verses 15, 16, and 17, Paul writes, And so as much as in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you who are in Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. For in it, in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith unto faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Paul had started the Corinthian congregation during his second missionary journey, recorded by Luke in Acts chapter 18. Paul in total spent 18 months in Corinth. And Luke writes these words concerning Paul's work with the Corinthian church. And many of the Corinthians hearing, believed, and were baptized. 
That's Acts 18 and verse 8. Now notice Paul's own assessment of his work in Corinth. He says, I preach the gospel to you, which also you received, and in which you stand. The Corinthians received the gospel message. They accepted it. They not only received the gospel, but they were standing in it as a congregation. The Corinthian church was founded on the gospel of Jesus Christ. They had accepted and had embraced the death, the burial, and the resurrection of the Christ. It was the foundation truth on which all of Christianity is based. And Paul continues in verse 2 by reminding the Corinthians and us as well that salvation is found in the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's found in His death, burial, and resurrection. In verse 2 of 1 Corinthians 15, Paul writes, "...by which also you are saved, if you hold fast that word which I preached to you, unless you have believed in vain." By which, Paul speaking of the gospel, by the gospel you are saved, if you hold those things that I preached to you. The word, the gospel that Paul preached was not of his own origin, but it came from Jesus Christ through revelation of the Holy Spirit. Remember what Paul says in Galatians chapter 1, verses 11 and 12, he says, But I made known to you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached by me is not according to man, for neither did I receive it from man, nor was I taught it, but it came through the revelation of Jesus Christ. And now in our lesson text, Paul ties the preaching of the gospel directly to salvation. However, notice the warning of believing in vain. If the gospel is not true and there is no resurrection, then your faith would be in vain. It would be worthless. And Paul will spend the rest of what we know as chapter, chapter 15 proving the gospel, proving the resurrection as true and worthy of our faith and our belief. Paul begins verse 3 by saying that I deliver to you that which I also received. For I deliver to you first of all that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. The understanding in the first century of the first part of this verse would have been Paul saying that he had preached that which was the primary doctrines of the Christian faith. The New American Standard Version of the Bible translates the first part of verse 3 by saying, For I delivered to you of first importance that which I also received. The foundation of the gospel as, as Paul will unfold is the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Paul begins in verse 3 with his death. Jesus died for our sins. He died for my sins. And friend, He died for your sins as well. All according to the Scriptures. Now there are many Old Testament Scriptures that foretell of Jesus' death. Let's just look at just one of them. Turn with me back to Isaiah uh, chapter 53, and we'll read uh, verses 3 through 7. Isaiah 53, beginning at that third verse. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we did not esteem him. Surely he bore our griefs and carried our sorrows, Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, and yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter, 
and as a sheep before its shears is silent. He opened not his mouth. He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon Him. And by His stripes we are healed. That's verse 5 that I just read. And now in our lesson text, Paul says that Christ died for our sins just as Isaiah and others prophesied. Now in verse 4, Paul continues with the message that he had preached to the Corinthians that he was buried and that he arose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Jesus Himself even predicted His own death, His burial, and that resurrection. In Matthew chapter 16, at verse 21, from that time Jesus began to show to His disciples that He must go to Jerusalem and to suffer many things from the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and to be killed and to be raised the third day. Jesus in Matthew chapter 12 applied the Old Testament story of Jonah to His own burial and resurrection. In verses 39 through 41 of Matthew 12, But Jesus answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, and no sign will be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so will be the Son of Man three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. So now in our lesson text, Paul once again claims the, the prophecy of Scripture to document the death, the burial, and the resurrection. So Paul reminds the Corinthians that he had preached that message, that message of Jesus' death, His burial, and His resurrection in the midst of their hearing. They received that message, the gospel, and they were, standing, they were standing firm and holding on to the message that Paul preached. And it was that message, the gospel, by which they were saved. An essential part of the saving message of the resurrection of Jesus from the grave. Friend, you and I today like those early Christians, must accept Jesus as our Savior. Galatians 3, 26 and 27 still reads, For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Remember Jesus' simple instructions in Mark chapter 16? And Jesus said unto them, Go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature, he who believes and is baptized will be saved. And friend, those instructions have not changed. Remember Hebrews chapter 12, actually chapter 13, verse 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And that applies to Jesus' teachings, including the plan of salvation. It has not changed through the year. It too is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The gospel is still the power of God that leads to salvation. Paul's words still ring through the centuries, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it, the gospel, is the power of God to salvation. Friend, if you have questions about your salvation, contact us at the Gatlinburg Church of Christ. We would love to sit down and talk with you about the gospel. Thank you for studying with us today. May God bless. Thank you for watching the New Testament Bible study. If you have comments or questions about today's study, write to us at the Gatlinburg Church of Christ, P.O. Box 361, Gatlinburg, Tennessee, 37738. If you would like a free Bible correspondence course, send an email to Bible study at GatlinburgChurchOfChrist.com. We invite you to join us in person on Sunday morning for our regular Bible study at 9 a.m. and worship at 10 a.m. We meet on Sunday evenings at 6 p.m. for evening worship. 
On Wednesday, we meet at 7 p.m. for midweek Bible study.